Hey everyone, my name is Percy Jules and today I'm going to show you how to set up Omnisphere in Studio One. Now the first thing we need to do is to create some tracks. Now we're going to need these tracks to send MIDI data to Omnisphere. Now one way to create tracks is to go up here to this plus symbol and just click it. Now this dialog box opens. Now let's enter a few things. Now first of all, for organization purposes, it might be a good idea to name the tracks. Now you can name them whatever you want, of course. I'm going to name mine Omni MIDI. Okay, now let's go down to type of track. Of course, we don't want audio tracks at this moment. We want instrument tracks. Now how many tracks do we want? Now Omnisphere has a total of eight parts and every single part can be considered a complete synthesizer on its own. Now there is the possibility of layering parts, but for this example I'm going to assume that we want to trigger all parts independently. So this means that for every single part we want to use, we're going to need one track. Now you don't have to create 8 tracks, you can create less if you want to, by the way you can always add more tracks later. For me, I usually prefer to create the maximum of 8 tracks right away, because that just makes the most sense to me. So I'm going to enter 8. Okay. Now, before we create these tracks, we still need to tell Studio One where to send the MIDI data coming from these tracks. So let's come down here to where it says Output, and let's select New Instrument. Uh, let's open this drop down menu and search for Omnisphere and select it. Okay. Now, as I will show you in a minute, the inputs for the parts in Omnisphere are set to MIDI channel 1 through 8 by default. So, to trigger these parts, of course, we need to assign corresponding MIDI channels to the tracks we're about to create. Now, if I would press OK now, the tracks would all be set to MIDI channel 1, which we don't want, because we want to set them to MIDI channels 1 through 8. Now, we could do this manually, of course, but a much easier way would be to, before we click OK, to select Ascending. OK, and now let's click OK. So now you can see that 8 tracks have been created, the output is going to the newly created instance of Omnisphere and is being sent through MIDI channels 1 through 8. Now let's open Omnisphere by clicking this icon right here. Now a window will pop up, first click inside the window to get rid of the opening screen and let's head over to the multi tab. Now as you can see the 8 parts are being represented here and you can also see that as I mentioned the inputs are all set to MIDI channels 1 through 8. So whatever MIDI data is coming through these channels will trigger these parts. Now at the moment there isn't that much to be triggered because we haven't selected any sound yet for these parts. So let me do that first. Ok, so now you can see I've selected patches for all 8 parts. Now let's have a little test. I'm gonna select the first track and let's see what happens when I play my keyboard. Now let's try another track. Ok, and another one. Perfect, we're now able to trigger all different parts independently. But now there is one more thing we need to do. Now let me open the mixer window and move Omnisphere out of the way a little bit so you can see what I mean. Now whichever track I play, so whichever part I trigger, the output is going to this track. And the reason for this is that the output of all different parts is being sent through the same output channel. Now of course we don't want that because when we get to the mixing stage we need to be able to manipulate the outputs of all different parts independently. Now to achieve that we need to do two things. First we need to tell Omnisphere to send the outputs of all parts to different output channels. And then we need to create additional output tracks to send the outputs to. 
So first, let's go back to the multi-tab in Omnisphere. And here you can see that the outputs of all parts in Omnisphere are being sent to the same output channel, channel A. So obviously we need to change that. So let's start with the second part and change the output to out B. Now let's change the third part to output C and so on. So now we're sending the different parts to eight different output channels, but we still only have one output track. So we need to add seven more so that all parts have their own designated output tracks. Now to do that in Studio One is extremely simple. Now if you click on this symbol with the arrow kind of pointing outward, uh, a drop down menu will appear showing all the available outputs of in this case Omnisphere. Now as you can see only the first channel is selected. So that means that only channel A is active. And you can see this represented by there only being one output channel in the mixer window. So the only thing we need to do to create seven more output tracks is to simply activate all the other available outputs by just checking all these boxes. And you can see here in the mixer window that automatically the corresponding output tracks are created. So let's have one more little test. Let's again select the first track. Now, if I play my keyboard now, what I expect to happen is that MIDI data will be sent through MIDI channel 1, which would then trigger the first part in Omnisphere, which would then send its output through output channel A, which would then end up on this output track right here. So let's see. Okay, looks good. Let's try the second one. Okay, and another one. Okay, it works perfectly. So that's how you do it. That's how you set up Omnisphere in Studio One. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching and I will talk to you soon.